Okay, first thing you want to do on a Smith & Wesson revolver is to remove the front side plate screw and that will remove the cylinder. Right hand threads, just unscrew it with the correct fitting screwdriver. Some of these may have some goo on them, so they may be a little bit sticky to remove. It's basically a, not a Loctite, but a paint that will melt when they put it in there to simulate nylock. You need to screw all the way. It's a spring-loaded screw, spring-loaded plunger on the screw. And there is the nylock or the paint that they put on it that's going to be a little difficult to break. Don't worry about it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to swing out the cylinder, grab a hold of the yoke and the cylinder, and pull them out the front of the gun. Then you're going to grab a hold of the cylinder and pull the cylinder rearward out of the yoke. You know, the yoke is totally disassembled. The cylinder extractor rod is held in with left-hand threads. So you're going to go over to a vise, pinch it good, and left-hand threads, that means righty-loosey, lefty-tidy. All left-hand threads. So put that aside. Now we're going to remove the grip. This grip is held on with a Allen screw. So undo the Allen screw. If these grips will not come off, these are two-piece grips. Loosen up the screw, use a screw to push the other grip off on the opposite side. Then come on the inside and remove the other grip. You're going to need a little captivator, so we're going to captivate the main spring. This is a hammer spring right here. As soon as I pull the trigger, it's going to get compressed and reveal a little takedown pin hole here. So I'm going to... You can't pull the trigger now, though, without the cylinder and a gun. So we have to keep the thumb piece back and held. Pull the trigger part way until you can expose the little hole in the bottom of the strut. Stick a little tool in it. Release the trigger. And then remove the hammer strut assembly. Okay, now we're going to remove the other side plate screws. They are interchangeable. If one was a flathead, it'd always go here. These are two round ones, so these are interchangeable. Remove both of them all the way. If they are interchangeable, that means round head, round head, then the California screws. They'll go in either hole. Okay, once those two screws are removed, hold the gun up off the table in your hand. Do not lay the gun on the table when you're doing this next procedure. I'm holding it in my hand. I'm going to put light pressure of my thumb on the side plate, and I'm going to give it a pretty good thump right here in the frame. And what that's going to do is going to vibrate the side plate loose. See how the side plate came up? Now go ahead and remove the side plate. Not on the table. In your hand, shock it loose. Never ever pry that side plate up. Okay, we have the working, work inner workings. Now, in order to get the trigger out, I have to partially fire the gun. In order to fire the gun, remember I have to hold the thumb piece back. So I'm going to hold the thumb piece back, partially pull the trigger, and there's going to be a place in here where the trigger will fall out. Manipulate the trigger a little bit, and when that trigger will fall out. Trigger and the double action sear. Not going to mess with the double action sear because this spring is rather delicate. You'll lose it. Uh, to take it apart, you just compress the spring, hold it in with a little screwdriver, slide the sear out to the right side of the gun, and take great care not to lose the spring. It'll be under somewhat compression. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the rebound slide. Rebound slide has got a 16-pound spring in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my screwdriver 
sideways like this, but I'm going to lay it underneath the edge of the rebound. I'm going to keep my thumb over it, and I'm going to pry it up part way. See what I did? I pried it up part way. It was like that. Now, when I stick my screwdriver blade, I'm going to pry it up part way. Now I can turn my screwdriver blade over this way and fulcrum off the frame. Keep my thumb over the back and let it rapidly decompress into my finger. Grab a hold of the rebound slide and spring. Pull the spring out of the rebound. What is left in the trigger is the trigger stirrup. It will fall out the back. If it doesn't fall out the back, it will once you remove it. Slide, pivot the hand back. It's sticky. Hand back, held, it's spring loaded. Grab a hold of the trigger, slide the trigger straight out to the right side of the gun. Take great care not to pull the trigger, because if you pull the trigger, it'll lower the cylinder stop, and the cylinder stop will go inside the trigger, and you won't be able to remove it. Some manipulation, there's the trigger stirrup fell out. Now the trigger and hand assembly. A little torsion spring inside the inside trigger. You can see it in there. To remove it, we're just going to pull out the hand, but we're not going to do that now. Next up is the cylinder stop. Cylinder stop and its spring. There's nothing holding the cylinder stop, spring, cylinder stop and spring in but the side plate. What we have to do is we have to use a couple of fingernails, a little screwdriver, hold the cylinder stop down, get another fingernail underneath the ball of the stop like that, and then gently nudge up the cylinder stop to the right side of the gun straight. Don't rack it. Don't rack the forward end, the backward end, the top end, the bottom end. Try to rack it straight up. Get your little, see it's starting to move now. Right now it's starting to move. The ball has cleared the frame and the spring is getting ready to launch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on nudging the cylinder stop straight out to the right as square as we possibly can. See how square it is? Take great care not to lose that spring. So I'm gonna pry it up. It's up higher now. Should be pretty easy. Now we're ready to launch the spring. So what I'm going to do now is I nudge the spring and bring the spring up a little bit too. Now the spring will come out like that. So now I bring, continue to bring them on. Out. The spring is under some compression. It will go across the room. Do not lose it. Keep on. Keep your fingers over it. Keep on coming out to the right. Spring is now totally decompressed. Cylinder stop and spring should fall out. Spring is a California spring. Put that stuff over the side. Next up is going to be your latch cylinder. Uh, cylinder, your thumb piece and thumb piece nut holds your bolt in. Spring alert in the back. So undo the thumb piece nut. And remove thumb piece nut and thumb piece as a unit. They will separate once you get them apart. We've got them out enough. Keep on unscrewing that thumb piece nut. Release now. Take the thumb piece nut out of the thumb piece. That's why it's a nut. It screws over the bolt. Okay, the bolt has a plunger in the back, plunger and spring in the back. There. What we're going to do is we're going to manipulate it back and forth 
and we're going to push out the back end first keeping great care not to launch plunger and or spring so right now I've started to bring it out the plunger has been allowed to decompress slightly but I'm going to keep on working it out back and forth back and forth push to the right we are now over another step we have to not quite launched our plunger yet, but we're ready to. So now one more little step. Now we're free. Remove the bolt, bolt plunger, and bolt plunger spring. The bolt plunger spring should come out with the bolt plunger. There should be a small end to the spring and a large end. So now that I've turned it around, this is the way it's supposed to be. It was the other end of the spring. They put it together wrong at the factory. Smith & Wesson is done. This is the safety giblets. Um, there is a teeny tiny spring, little torsion spring in there that we're not gonna mess with, but it comes out. It's, got, it's pretty easy. It's got a little leg for it. We have a big strong plunger and spring for the cam that rotates the child safety lock. Child safety lock has this little notch in it that's going to engage with the slot in the hammer and keep you from pulling the trigger. So to reassemble this gun, we're going to get the bolt and plunger spring. What we're going to do is we're going to find out if we're lucky. If we're lucky, what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to put my bolt in this way. Remember, we took it out the opposite and see if the bolt will go down in. The bolt will not go down. Oh, it does. Bolt goes in this way. So now I don't have to fight that spring. So get your bolt out. What I'm talking about is when you have to put this bolt plunger in the gun, you put your spring first into the back end of the bolt plunger, the bolt, and then you have to get your pivot of the bolt lined up with the hole in the window bolt pivot hole in the window of the frame. That's that round circle right there. You get your bolt, the pivot of the bolt, into the hole, into the frame, and then it's a matter of compressing the spring and pushing your bolt over. But we are lucky. Our bolt will allow us to put the bolt in this way and drop our bolt in without fighting that spring. Almost. Not quite. So we're not lucky. We were without the bolt, bolt spring and plunger in it. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is traditional. So you get the pivot of the bolt lined up with the bolt pivot hole in the frame. Now it's a matter of not losing the bolt plunger and spring, compressing them and always maintain control of the bolt body. We worked it down one step. The bolt pivot is in the hole. Now we have to work it back another step. Small little screwdriver. Don't put too much pressure on it. A smaller screwdriver. Get the bolt plunger in and compress it into the bolt. Keep on sliding it up. Manipulate the bolt as necessary to line it up with the pivot. We're not lining up. There we are. One more time. Bolt plunger forward. Snaps in. There is the pivot of the bolt through the hole in the frame. Keep pressure on the bolt as you're putting on your thumb piece and your thumb piece nut. Screw down the thumb piece nut tight. Now 
Okay, next up is a cylinder stop, cylinder stop spring. Now, what we did, we paid great care into taking the cylinder stop out straight, squarely. You can't be letting it rack. So we're gonna put cylinder stop spring in the cylinder, our front pin. This is the pivot for our cylinder stop, trigger pivot, hammer pivot. This is a pivot for the rebound. So I'm gonna go for over the cylinder stop pivot. Spring in the hole in the cylinder stop. Over the pivot. Now I've got my thumb in the ball, the front, the rear part of the cylinder stop. What you're going to do now is you're going to captivate a coil and you're going to shove the spring into the cylinder stop. Captivate a coil thusly into the cylinder stop. Line up the cylinder stop over its pivot. Square, shove the spring up slide the cylinder stop over so you can keep that going in square be sure the spring is totally into the cylinder stop before you push it over i got a little ahead of myself so i gotta take the cylinder stop out before i agitate that spring Push the spring over so it's resting on the frame. There's no seat for that spring, just a surface. Grab a hold of your trigger. Your trigger stirrup goes in the back of the trigger. Bring your hand back, stirrup up, hand back, locate the trigger pivot, and slide the trigger over the trigger pivot and release hand. Okay, now we're gonna get the rebound and rebound slide. From the rear, rebound spring. There's a nose on the front of the rebound and a little hole. The trigger stirrup goes in the little hole in the front of the rebound. Ensure that the tongue of the rebound is on top of the trigger stirrup and the trigger stirrup itself goes into the hole below the tongue. Then you use a special tool. Hold the gun solid. This is a 16 pound spring. You want to shove that spring all the way forward and then push the tool down and get it into the rebound. You're going to pull the trigger a couple times. If you did not get the trigger stirrup into the hole below the tongue, first time you pull the trigger, your rebound is going to wing up and it'll be butt up in there. So we have successfully completed that. Grab a hold of your hammer. This is your hammer pivot. Now the way we had to get the hammer out, trigger had to be pulled. So you're going to pull the trigger, pull the thumb piece back, Pull the trigger to the rear, release thumb piece, drop in hammer. Grab a hold of your hammer strut assembly, line them up, and now you're going to have to be a cylinder that is pull the thumb piece back so you can pull the trigger and take pressure off your strut and remove your tool. Shove it in too far. The tool that's holding your seat in cannot be protruding out the far sides. 
more than that. In be a, be a cylinder, pull the trigger, retract your tool. Now, in order to check, again, check and make sure our assembly is correct up till now. Everything, cylinder, stop, trigger, hand, rebound, hammer, and strut has to be free and pushed over to the left. Be a cylinder, hold your thumb piece back, fire it once. If it fires, everything's good. Push everything back over to the right that may have come out. Grab a hold of your side plate. Side plate has a flange. It's gonna go up on top and you push it home with your fingers. Get your two side blade screws and screw them down tightly. Remember they're interchangeable. Our yoke screw goes into this little notch right here on the yoke. If the yoke is allowed to slide forward, it will not, that screw, yoke screw will not go in. So slide your extractor rod over your yoke from the front. Install yoke into hole in the frame. manipulation is required. You must ensure that the yoke does not have a gap there. It is pushed fully to the rear and held. Fully to the rear and held. Hold it to the back. Put in your yoke screw while holding it firmly to the rear and screw in your yoke screw. Be sure you hold that yoke to the rear. Screw it down. Close the cylinder. Should have a gun. Should be sure the gun is empty. Cylinder opens and closes. You can fire it. Grab a hold of the grips, lay them in. They have a pin in the bottom that goes into a hole into the grip. From the left side of gun, right, left side of gun, put in your grip screw and rotate it tight. This has a hammer inside the gun, but it's called a hammerless because you can't see it on the outside. So this is double action only. Any questions?